days. It's two days now. Now the next day, Jesus was walking again. Now it's the third day, three times. John the Baptist, he pointed again, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Three days now in a row, one after another. The first day, the Levites and the priests were looking for, wanting to know if he is Jesus. The second day, he ended up baptizing Jesus. And the third day, he saw Jesus again. And you know what? There was a group of young men who was standing beside John the Baptist. And what? two of them, their name was, was John and Andrew. Are you following me? Please follow me very carefully. Two of them were standing there beside John the Baptist while those three days and John and Andrew, the third day, they decided they will follow Jesus. They left John the Baptist and they started following Jesus. After John pointed at Jesus, they look at Jesus really nicely and they follow him. While Jesus was walking, he sensed that there are someone following him. Yeah. You, read, you go home and you read this book. John chapter 1, verse 18 to 52. And uh, Jesus was walking and he realized that someone was following him and he turned around. You know what he said? He asked them, Are you looking for someone? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Very nice question, right? Every words that come out of Jesus seems to have a meaning, so he, yeah. He said, What are you looking for? The disciples, they will, I think they do not know what to say. And you know what they say? Master, where are you staying? Where are you staying? Master, where do you live? Master, where are you going? They just say, Master, where are you staying? You know what Jesus told them? He just told them three words. He said, come and see. Come and see. Wow. Every word that come out of Jesus seems to have a name. What are you looking for? Come and see. Yes. Come and see. You know what happened to the story? That day? That day? Jesus, the Bible says that they went with Jesus to where he lives. Jesus took them to where he stayed. And the Bible says that that night they sleep with Jesus. Grab him. They sleep with Jesus. Jesus took them to their home. They reach home. Maybe that evening they eat together and they sleep together. Wow, Jesus. And the next day, Jesus was on the road. And he saw Philip and he said, Philip, follow me. Philip followed Jesus. He took him also to where he stayed. And Jesus, he went and he saw Jesus where he stayed, and he, he went back, and he went and he saw his brother, Nathaniel. Nathaniel was standing under a tree. Maybe it was very hot, so Nathaniel was standing there under the shade. And Philip came to Nathaniel and he said, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, I have found him. I have found him. Nathaniel said, who is he? The Messiah, I have found him. Just like any normal human being.
mean? My son said, where is he from? Where is he from? He's from Nazareth. Nathaniel said, you know what Nathaniel said? Is there any good thing that can come out of Nazareth? Nothing good over there. That is like a uh, tonto. Yes. No tonto Manila. That is like a squabble's place. There is nothing good over there. Can anything good come there? Come out of that place? You know what, what Philip told Nathaniel? Just come and see. Come and see. Amen? Amen. Wow. And Nathaniel went. He went with Philip, doubting. As he was coming close to Jesus, Jesus looked at Nathaniel and he said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom no guy is found in his mouth. Yes. Nathaniel was so surprised. He said, Lord, do you know me? Do you know me? And Jesus told him, Nathaniel, before Philip called you, I saw you. I was the one who called you from the under the fig tree. Wow. Nathaniel was totally shocked. And he told him, Jesus, Lord, you are really the Son of God. And you know what Jesus told him, Nathaniel, because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree, that's why you say I'm the son of God. But listen to this, Nathaniel, you will see greater things than this. Amen? You will see greater things than this when you just go and see what Jesus will do. Amen? Friends, that is our story this afternoon. Amazing story, right? right? You yes. see, this is the lesson I want you to learn. All of us. You see, these disciples, they were first disciples of John the Baptist. They later became the disciple of John. Why? Why did they became a disciple? So the answer, and that is the similar uh, uh, title that I want us to learn this morning, this afternoon, is how I can be a disciple of Jesus. How can I follow Jesus every day? This is a continuation of our divine, divine worship. How can I be a missionary? How can I tell others about Jesus? How? I will tell you that how this evening. This afternoon, based on the story. Number one, you cannot follow Jesus. Are you with me? Yes. We cannot follow Jesus unless we are looking for him. Amen? You cannot follow Jesus. No matter how much we say, I will go, I will go, I will go. You cannot go unless you are looking for him. Yes. Our theme for this year is I will go make disciples. You cannot go unless you are looking for him. Now, Jesus asked a very interesting question to the disciples, Albert. What are you looking for? Yes. Amazing, right? In your life every day, let me ask you an honest question. What are you looking for in your life every day? Looking for money? <laughs> Let's be honest. Yes, money? What else? What are you looking for? Success. Success? What is success? Now friends, look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. 
the disciples, Andrew and John, the reason why they followed Jesus that day, because they have been looking for Jesus their entire life. Yes. You wake up in the morning, look for Jesus. Seek and you shall find. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means you look for Jesus every day. Wake up in the morning, look for Jesus in his words. Now, to cut it story, I think you have got my point. When, if you want, let me say it like this. If you are not talking about Jesus, maybe you are not looking for Jesus. Maybe you are not looking for Jesus daily. Maybe you are not reading your Bible every day. How do you look for Jesus? You look for Jesus in prayer. You look for Jesus in reading your Bible every day. Look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. In every decision you have to make, ask Jesus. Look for Jesus. In every choices that you have to make, look for Jesus. Ask Jesus. Friends, this uh, afternoon, Jesus is in you. Amen? God is in us. When you are still alive, you still have God, you still have chance. Are you listening to me? Listen to this very carefully. When you are still alive, you still have God, you still have chance to find Him. When you are patai, tapos na Dios. Tapos na ang chance mo. Yes. Finish. That's when Jesus proclaimed in His last words, it is finished. When you still have life, you still have that. When you die, no more life. If you die tomorrow, can your money save you? So your money is not your life. If you die tomorrow, can your work save you? For then, indeed. So your work is not your life. Your children, even your children, sometimes you say your children is my life, my family. If you die tomorrow, can your family save you? Let's be real. No, your family cannot save you. So your children and your family is not your life. They are not the reason why you are living. The reason why you are living is because God is in you. Amen? Amen. Now let me ask you a question. You remember the last time you inhaled? Do you remember? Just now you remember, right? That is the evidence of God's presence. When you sleep at night, every time you sleep at night, you practice patai. Yeah. Yes. When you sleep at night, are you breathing? How do you know? <laughs> are you breathing when you're sleeping? How do you know? Because you are still alive today. Right? And you know what? Yes. Even when you forget God, God never forgets you. Even when you do not 
pray, God, never forget you. Because he is your bread of life. Amen? Amen. Do you know why God never leave you? Because he is a loving God. Amen. Amen? Amen? The reason why God never leave you because he loves you and he cares for you. That's number one. Number two, he never leave you because you have no other option. Are you with me? Do you have any second option? What a poor thing we are. Yes. You have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan B. But do you have any plan B for your life? If you die tomorrow? No. You have no other option. That is the only reason why God never leave you. If he leave you today, you are apartheid. No more chance, no more option. We are nothing. What are you proud of? Your house? Your car? Your work? When you are still alive, you still have God. The reason why God never leave us, because we have no other option. He wants to help us and He wants to save us. Amen? Amen. And you know the third option why he, he never leave us? Because He created us in His image. Amen? Amen. There is no other creatures in this world like you and me. Amen? We are created in the image of God. This morning I heard a long lecture about Trinity. Yes. God in us. Yes. The reason why God never leave us because we are created in His image. Why? Huh? Why did God not create us like a horse? Or another image? Why his image? Do you know why? I will tell you the reason why. And this is the reason what it makes me really want to go to be with Jesus. The reason why God never leave us is, you know what? Does Jesus have brothers and sisters? What do you think? Does he have any brother and sister? Yes or no? How do you know? The Bible says he's the only begotten child. <laughs> Does he have brothers and sisters? No, he doesn't. The Bible says that he is the only begotten son. And he created you and me in his image. Why? You know why? Because one day he wants you to be adopted into the family of God to become his brothers and sisters. Amen? Wow. And that is why he gave his life for you. Why? Because you are his brethren. And that is why he never give up on you. Why? Because he wants to live with you. He is an elder brother. You are related to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Wow. How does it feel to know that Jesus is my older brother? Not only by creation, not only by redemption, but by inheritance. To be adopted to into the family of God. Amen? Amen? And the Bible says that the whole universe wait with anticipation for the manifestation of God's children. Amen? Are we God's children? What makes us God's children? Because we are created in His image. 
And the Bible says that one day we will sit at his throne and we will judge together with him. Why? Why do we have that privilege? He was made in our, he lived like us. He died on the cross for us. And we will be brethren for eternity. My friends, this afternoon, I want to give you this uh, piece of paper. For those of you who do not know how to seek God, you do not know how to read your Bible, please, I want you to have this one copy it. Except for those uh, church members from Bali, I gave them last night. Please, so there is a Bible marking. That Bible marking is uh, for your Bible. Please mark your Bible with it. I am not uh, looking forward to you giving Bible study to others. I want you to Bible study yourself every day. Yes. The more you read your Bible, the more you Bible study yourself. Allow God to work in from you. Yes. And this afternoon, Please uh, mark that in your Bible. One inch. One inch. Yes. Please mark it in your Bible. That is one requirement. Please remember, after 16 weeks from now, this Sabbath, we will have our graduation. And one of the major requirements, I want to see this Bible marking in your Bible. If you do not have a Bible, please buy a Bible. If you do not have a Bible and you have a cell phone, please sell your cell phone and buy your Bible. <laughs> sell your cell phone. Wait <laughs> there. Please buy a Bible. Always have a Bible to read the Bible. Friends, and the story goes, the disciples, and the next one is this, please there is one requirement. What we are doing now, this is not a program, I am not, uh, I am uh, here to help you develop a lifestyle of walking with Jesus every day. Look for Jesus every day, seek him every day. And this other one I'm going to give you now is uh, choose your partner, husband and wife partner together. Choose your partner by two. By two, please. And I will give you this piece of paper. Young people, you can choose by three. Write your name here, you three. Be your partner, eh? Look for your partner. Are you from here? From there. Okay. Look for a partner. Uh, from Bali? Oh, okay. Uh, Pastor will give you Bali. Oh, you were there last night? Indeed. Could be. Oh. Uh, by partner. Partner. Who's your partner, Elder? The son? Okay. Please remember this is your partner for the next 16 weeks. I will follow up with you again, brother, elder. opportunity this opportunity comes once in a lifetime you will never have this opportunity again 
Oh, Bali. Bali, Bali. All Bali. 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 Okay. Are you guys okay there? You have? Okay. Please uh, remember this. Please grab this opportunity. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You will never have this opportunity again. This opportunity is uh, given to us by our Southern Asia Pacific Division. And uh, when you finish this training, you are a recognized trained missionary of the Adventist Church. And any time, and your name will go under the data of the union and the division. So any time you want to be a missionary anywhere in the Philippines or abroad, your name is in the list of the data that you are already a trained missionary. The reason why this is uh, this training is being highly recommended about any trainings that is going on in the Amazing Facts, in the 1000 Missionary Movement. This training is highly recommended by the church because this is the only training, missionary training, that is inbuilt within the church structure. The rest of the missionary training school, they are outside of the church structure. And this is the only training that is built in that while you are in your church, you are engaged in missionary work and you are still working and you, everywhere you go is your mission field. Now, please listen very carefully. Okay, are you listening? Please let me have your attention. Your church name, your name and your partner's name and you choose a target area. Make sure your target area is outside of your church, close to where you live. It's an unentered barangay. Unentered, there's no church there. Please, your target area is an unentered area. And in that area, I will guide you. Please look for only two houses. How many houses? Two only. If two is hard, at least one. Start with one. At least you start. Mama Kapati, my friends, my family, my brethren, this is not about the house. This is not about the church. This is about your relationship, your walk with Jesus. If you cannot go, you assess yourself every day, every week. If you cannot go out and share with others, that means Jesus is not your priority. You are not looking for Jesus. And when Jesus will come back, you will be lost. Why? Because you are not looking forward to Him. So, mga kapatid, my friends, please visit your house. The next time I will come, I want to visit with you. Today, I cannot sleep here because we are heading somewhere. I do not know what's the Lord's plan right now, but next time I come, I want to sleep here in this church and I want to visit with you where you are visiting. So, friends, please, Write your name, write your church name, write your target area, your partner's name and your target area. Only the area, the target. Do not write the house you're visiting. And please visit two houses. Now, please remember, do not change house. Same house, two house, you Concentrate on the two house and you visit them once a week. Once a week only you visit two house, once a week. Make sure 
Though, now listen to this. Those two houses are purely non-Adventist house. Not non-active church members not coming to church. That is not counted. Non-church member, non-Adventist home. Please go and visit with them. Now, this is what you do. When you go to them, no Bible study. Are you listening? No Bible study. Do not talk about Sabbath. Please remember this very well. Do not talk about Sabbath. Do not talk about Babui. Don't talk about anything. Just go. I give you an example. We just go. Paolo. Who are you? Never tell them that you are Adventist. Don't tell them you are Adventist. Don't tell them you are Adventist. Do not ask them what is their church. Sir, we are missionaries for. You are a missionary. <coughs> what do you want? What's your purpose? Sir, we are just visiting around and we just want to come and pray with you. Simple. Pray. Why pray? Because every religion pray. Yes. Even the atheists, they pray also. So tell them, sir, we just want to come and pray with you. Are you listening? Please take note. Do not say, we want to come and pray for you. Because if you say pray for you, they will think, pray for me? What's wrong with me? <laughs> pray for me? Maybe I am very sinful. Maybe these people are very righteous. Pray with you. Please remember that. Sir Taupo Chinoyan, sir, we are missionaries. Don't tell them you are Adventist. Missionaries, for what do you want? Sir, we just visiting and we want to come and pray with you. They will not say no unless they are in Lysenic Christo or Jehovah's Witness. They might say no. But if they say no, do not insist. Are you with me? Do not insist. Just say thank you very much for Malamik Salamat. Next time, Malam Po. And if they tell you to come in, please come inside the house. Please, with respect, take off your shoes at the door. Don't walk with your shoes inside the house. And don't go inside the house standing around. Wow, you have a nice house, yeah? <laughs> No drama, no plastic. Straight to the point, pray. No more drama. Wow, you have nice flowers in your house. Wow, you have a nice house. It's like a palace. Please, no more drama. No more plastic. Just be real. They don't know you. You do not know them. First impression counts. Yes. Just when you go inside, go directly to, don't worry about anything. Just focus about praying. When you go inside, say, thank you very much for, for allowing us to come inside your house. Before we pray, my name is Malakai. My wife's name is Marsley. Is it okay if I know your name, please? so that I can mention your name in my prayer. Yes. Do not ask their name first. You introduce yourself first, and you ask their name because you want to include it in your prayer. And then and they say, do you have any prayer request for? Okay, thank you very much. Paul. Let's pray. Is it okay if uh, I will pray first and my wife and the uh, and then you also pray. Remember, your goal is you want them to pray. 
Because the moment they pray, you are connecting them to God. Yeah. See, can we all pray? Always try to pray. That's why you go two by two. Because if all of you will go, the whole church will go. Very, you cannot all pray. Yes. Two by two, please. Two by two. Because you are interested in the people. You want them, their spiritual life, you want them to pray. Yes. And then you pray. And please, when you pray, don't preach in your prayer. Please do not preach in your prayer. And pray like a sinner. Pray like you are more sinful than that person. Do not pray for this person. Lord, please may you help this person to know you. Yes. Please may you please forgive him. Help him to know the truth. Don't pray like that. Pray like a sinner. Lord, we are very sinful. I am so sinful. And I know we all need you. Thank you very much for bringing us to our brother's house today. Lord, we know you are in this place. We know you are in him. We can see how you have blessed his house. Lord, may you continue to bless him and continue to help you in the work you are doing in us. Lord, we want to walk with you every day. Please help us and help our brother too. In Jesus' name, I pray. Pray like a sinner. And when you finish praying, right when you finish, you tell him, brother, thank you very much for allowing us to come to your house. We hope we can come back next time to pray with you. Is it okay with you? Yes, come anytime. Wow. And then when you are just about to go out, and then maybe they ask you, so what religion do you belong to? What church do you belong to? You can tell them, we are Seventh-day Adventist church members. Wow. Wow, so you guys don't eat babui, right? Why? Why you guys don't eat babui? Why? What's your answer? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you are here for training. Please remember this key. What I am sharing with you today, I have tested it in around almost more than 20 countries. And this is the best strategy I found out after 27 years of my ministry. Three minutes approach, the approach I'm telling you now. You can use this anywhere. You can use it in the city, in the town, in the farm, anywhere. You can use it over there. In school, those of you who are teachers, you can use it in your, with your teachers. I just want to pray with you. Can I just pray with you? Pray with you. Can I pray with you? Pray with you. Your friends in school, you can use it. And if they ask you, oh, so you are Adventist, right? Why you don't eat bubble? Tell them, I don't eat babui. Don't tell them, I don't eat. Don't tell them, oh, I don't eat babui because in Leviticus chapter 11, it is not giving Bible study. Remember, it's not about Leviticus chapter 11. Yes. Oh, I go to church on a Sabbath because in Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 and also in Genesis chapter 2, no Bible study. Remember, I told you no Bible study. Yes. Now listen to this. If they ask you, please, are you following me? Okay. Now if they ask you, why you don't eat babui? Tell them, sir, brother, I don't eat babui because Jesus do not eat babui. I go to church on Sabbath because I, 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 I go to church on Sabbath though because Jesus also go to church on Sabbath. Amen? We have two slogans. Please do not forget this slogan. Please say it with me. Number one, prayer is the key. Two, three, prayer is the key. Let's say it together. One, two, three, prayer is the key. Okay? Remember, prayer is the key to the house. Not? Yes, 
what do you want? Don't tell them, prayer is the people. <laughs> yeah. So I come, we are just visiting and we want to pray with you. Okay? Prayer is the key. Please remember, prayer is the key. Yes. Don't change the key. Yes. Remember, prayer is the key. Second slogan. We have only two slogans. Please remember this. I will ask you again when I come back. What's our number one slogan? Prayer is the key. Number two slogan. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Jesus is the answer. If they ask you any question, tell them, I do this because of Jesus. And tell them, I go to church on Sabbath because of Jesus. Why do you go to the Seventh-day Adventist? I go to Seventh-day Adventist because Seventh-day Adventist, they follow Jesus all the way. Amen? Amen. And you tell them, do you want to know Jesus more? Maybe one day, we can study the Bible to know Jesus more. Amen? Please never study the Bible because of the Sabbath. Never study the Bible because of food. Never study the Bible because of anything else. But study the Bible because you want to know Jesus more. Amen? It is my prayer. Please uh, collect your papers. Are you finished? Your partners. Please remember two house. You know what I'm training you now? I'm not only training you, I'm actually visiting house too. I have plenty house I visit. Yes. If I don't visit a house, I feel like so very boring. Your Christian life is so boring. If you don't visit someone else. And also, not only boring, you are so selfish. You never go and visit others. Now let me ask you a question before I finish. While you are collecting the papers, finishing, let me ask you a question. How many of you love your church? How many of you love your church? Or oh, the rest of you don't love your church? How many of you love your church members? Okay, let's not put our hands together. Uh, let me ask you, who respond me, yes or no? Do you love your church? <laughs> Are you okay? Let me ask you again. Do you love your church members? Yes. Okay, now I'll ask you the third question. Do you visit them? No. Someone, 
you are actually visiting Jesus. Amen? Amen. Do you want to visit Jesus? Do you want to see Jesus? Do you care for him? Do you want to love him more? Go visit others. Yes. Go visit. Visit Jesus in his words and go visit Jesus in person. Jesus is with everyone. Amen? Amen. And every time you pray, you are connecting yourself to Jesus. Prayer. What's our slogan again? Let's say it together. Number one, prayer is the key. Number two, Jesus is the answer. May the Lord bless you, mga kapatid. Please, can I have the papers? Can someone collect the papers, please? I think can you collect the paper? Where's your paper? Yeah, did you fill it? Is it filled? Please fill it. Please choose. Please listen to this. Choose an unempty area. If you are, if you are old Adventist, how many old Adventists here? Born Adventists. I'm talking directly now to born Adventists. Born Adventists, please go and visit, so that our young Adventists will see us that we are leading the way. You know what they say? I want to challenge the old Adventists. They say statistics have proven that those who have been converted to the Adventists, they are more on fire than us who are old Adventists. We old Adventists are just sitting in the church and watching each other. Mga kapatid at the back, please go visit your friends. Yes. Go visit your barangay. You know what? Don't keep, don't, don't talk about Bamui, don't talk about Sabah. Don't stress yourself. You cannot change anyone. Can you change yourself? You cannot change yourself. So don't think of changing others. What you just do, go and pray with them. Pray with them. Don't, don't criticize them. Don't judge them. Even though they are eating Bamui, don't judge them. Maybe you are worse than them. Just pray with them, the Lord will guide them. So please uh, visit, visit, visit. If you love Jesus, visit him. He is waiting for you. Praise the Lord. I will be praying for you. Not only praying for you, I am excited to visit with you when I come back. I wish I could stay here two days and visit around. Yes. But as of now, thank you very much for coming. Remember, if you are not visiting, my last, my last uh, point is, is you, after every day, every week, assess yourself. If you are not visiting, maybe you are not looking. If you are looking for Jesus, you will go look for him. And you know what Jesus said? Don't worry about what you're going to do. He just said, just go. Come and see what I will do. Amen? May the Lord bless you this afternoon. Let's bow our heads together wherever you are. Father, may you bless your children, please. We all want to learn how to walk with you. Please help us. Help us to pray more. Help us to look for you in your words, in every valley of decision and choices we have to make. To be still and know that you are God by looking for you. And also help us to acknowledge your presence every moment. To be sensitive to hear your voice and give us the power not only to hear your voice, but to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Maraming salamat po sa mensahe na napakinggan. Kahit po English ay talaga namang ating nabos na nawa, na, 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 na